We have these wondrous tools that can work miracles. Let's not wreak havoc and create disaster with them. Tony, you are a big pioneer in the metaverse and you were sharing that a sci-fi story had in first introduced you to the concept of the metaverse and that you have then been working in emerging technology ever since. And so I'm curious how science fiction has informed your understanding of technology. I'm glad you asked that question. Um, my first big inspiration when it comes to all this that got me started programming 3D graphics, actually, was as a little kid seeing the first Star Wars movie and that scene with Princess Leia as a hologram on the tabletop. And I didn't know it at the time because I was a little kid. Then ended up studying programming and would find the projects at work where I could code 3D graphics. Mm -hmm. And I realized at some point, oh boy, that image had really been burned in my brain, literally that holographic image of Leia. Um, I've been trying to build those holograms ever since. And so to me, the metaverse is like the 3D software and content. Again, it doesn't matter what device it's on. And someday, hopefully, there are in-air holograms like we saw Princess Leia and there's not a lot of things on her faces and, you know, and it's all just in the air around us. That would be the magic. So I've been pursuing that dream ever since. <laughs> um, already passionate about 3D graphics, red snow crash, uh, got inspired by the metaverse, took a couple of attempts at building virtual worlds back when the tech didn't work. But it was that's that's been the burning passion. Like, can we bring uh, the magic of that digital realm into the real world around us? Right, completely. Yeah, because I agree that sci-fi stories have definitely informed our ideas of what the future can look like. And speaking of stories of the future, you created a musical that was about the end of the world. And I would love for you to speak more about that and how you're using storytelling yourself to tell stories about the future. Okay, so I've been a musician since I can remember. Sitting at the piano, I was a three-year-old next to my dad who was a professional musician. Um, and I actually started in the music business and then switched into tech being a commercially frustrated musician and, you know, my father as well. And I decided, oh, you know, I better go make a living. So I kept my music and tech side separate for years, but I actually worked, always worked on some cool sort of bigger side projects in music. And I did a production of Jesus Christ Superstar at Burning Man mm -hmm. to a packed audience of crazed, you know, folks partying uh, for one night. We rehearsed for like two months. We did this big production with 40 people. And a few years after that, I was so inspired. I wasn't even a big musical theater fan before that. I was so inspired and freaked out about world events that I decided I was, I got inspired one day and wrote a musical. So it's called Judgment Day. It's a musical about the end of the world, um, but it's really a love story. Boy meets girl, boy gets girl, boy loses girl because the world is destroyed in a cosmic battle between good and evil. The protagonist is the last man standing, is literally the last person on earth and delivering a solilo soliloquy at the beginning and end of the show that's really about his personal journey, but it's all about us uh, making our own decision and making, uh, deciding what's uh, real and important in life. It's rock, it's pop, it's electronic. It, it's, despite it being, it's a tragedy. It's not a farce. Um, despite it being tragic, it's really, if I do say so myself, it's pretty great music. Um, and I'm just interested in these themes. And for some reason, I'm exploring these themes in this medium of musical theater, which I wasn't a big fan of growing up, but I've always had a few I like. And guess what? Ever since I finished doing that, so I finished the demos during COVID lockdown, and now I released a record, and now I'm going to do a Web3 project around it. Uh, but ever since I finished the demos, I got to work on a second musical. So it's something I decided I, I, I should be doing in this phase of my musical career. That one's about toxic masculinity, white supremacy, and the collapse of the United States, and other feel good peace. I like to explore big things. 
interesting. And with the topic of agency, so you mentioned it's about an individual that's creating agency and assuming agency over themselves. And I can see that applying also on a larger scale as we're facing so many issues and us needing to have agency over where we're directing ourselves as a society. So do you think that it also applies both on that individual and on a larger level too? I think it does. And I think for me, probably because I've been working so hard on that music project, I've gotten back in tune and in touch with that creative side. Mm -hmm. And so it's informing and, and I'm working on a creator driven metaverse project with Neil and his management team. Everyone's an author or a musician or a creator of some sort. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just really in tune with these issues. It's probably why I've been talking about the ethics and the, you know, thoughtful, conscious way we should shape technology going forward. So to me, it's, yeah, sort of macro and micro level connected these same ideas that I think we have to have that sense of adjudication, judgment, uh, discrimination in the positive sense, and make thoughtful decisions about how we shape our technology in future. Absolutely. Like we are, we are, have these wondrous tools that can work miracles. Let's not wreak havoc and create disaster with them. Absolutely. And I'm super interested that you're creating a creator driven metaverse. And I have read that you're a big proponent of an open metaverse. So can you explain the values that drive your definition of an open metaverse? Yeah. So uh, open metaverse has a sort of technological definition, which is around uh, create file formats, communication protocol standards so that tools and software work together. Um, but it's motivated by the desire that when you create something, it's not trapped in one person's piece of software, one company's piece of software. You want to make a 3D asset, it should be as interoperable and exchangeable as a JPEG. So I've worked on file formats like GLTF um, that enable that. And so the open metaverse, the goal of it is there should be no barriers to entry for people who want to be technology providers, tool makers, and especially creators. Um, the creation process should not be trapped in a particular piece of software and only viewable on a particular kind of online experience. It's very much like the open source current 2D internet. We're just adding more pieces of standard and standards and interoperable tech that are 3D focused. There's been a historical problem in people creating 3D software that they, they've because of business models and other things like, you know, it's mostly been about gaming so far or, you know, CAD models, digital twins. They're not thinking so much about interoperability. They're always trying to just deliver one experience. But now these are tools for us to all communicate. You make a piece of art, I should be able to experience it, whether I'm in Decentraland or Roblox or wherever. Um, you know, I make a piece of software to power uh, the creation of an avatar system, you know, the tools for that, or you and I messaging each other. That should be able to run in lots of places. That's the way the internet works today. We're just talking about some more 3D tools that connect and interoperate the way 2D internet tools do. It's the same process as an open process. It's open source. It's standards groups getting together and agreeing. It's experimentation with content and formats, but it's all in that internet way. So it's just that and 3D. And a lot of these pieces are already built. There's just, we need a few more, but there's like, I mentioned GLTF, that's an existing standard. Everyone uses it. And there's lots of pieces of tech like that that we'll see over the next few years. And there's a lot of folks in industry, academia, and research collaborating on creating those as we speak. I see. And I can see that really contributing to an inclusive metaverse. So I'm glad that people like you are focused on it. And could you also just speak to what a creator-driven metaverse, what kind of opportunities that will bring to creators and storytellers to connect and create and share their vision in the metaverse. Creators should not have friction on the tools they use. It shouldn't be unduly expensive. Um, they should have easy ways to distribute their content everywhere. Folks should be able to experience those things anywhere in the context they choose. Like, you know, folks want to consume or interact with that content. Uh, if we want to collaborate together, that should be easy. That should not be a giant exercise in finding a piece of game engine tech and building a new app and all this stuff. That should all just be kind of in the fabric. And then it has to be connected to blockchain tech for tracking the provenance of what you would create so that you can be properly compensated with, web, you know, with crypto and, and Web3 uh, payment systems 
and with the ability to kind of mix and match and everybody, everybody who's contributed to that actually participates in the success of that. And in a way that if there are intermediaries and middlemen, of course they should be compensated too, but it should be equitable across the board and those uh, intermediary should not be taken most of the value out of that that has been created by someone else. And that is the dream, that is the goal for what we're doing. Amazing. Well, I'm excited that as we evolve past this stone tool phase of the metaverse, that things like this can help make it more advanced and usable. So I'm excited to see how it continues to evolve in the future with all the work that you're doing and whatnot. I am too, and I'm excited to see what people create. It's going to be an amazing future. I can't wait. It's yeah. a thrilling conversation. Absolutely. Thank you.